This grunt looks like legit snapper after you cook it. Look how white that is. What is going on guys? Welcome back, Joe BT here. I have a very, very, very enormous Key West grunt that I caught this last commercial trip. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll link it in the description. This is one of the fish that we caught right before we went to bed. Giant Key West grunt. We only caught one of these, which you really don't catch too many offshore in Jacksonville. But when you do catch them, much like one of the South Florida species, they are enormous, which this one definitely is enormous. We can't really just sell it. It's not like a grouper or something, and it's a, it's a grunt, so I don't know of any market that would actually want to buy grunts. But this one's giant, and it's big enough to get a bunch of meat off of, so we're gonna cook it up, and we're gonna do some tomatoes with uh, special stuffing in them. You know what? What? I forgot to get tomatoes. These look good. Ooh, look at this big thing. I'm taking you home too, my dude. <laughs> We're back from Publix, got our tomatoes, and I uh, got some cilantro too for it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fillet motto grunt. Essentially the same thing as filleting a sheep head or a big four year big snapper. Just same deal, big scale, just like it too. You could technically, you know, go through and then cut all the way over and just do like one slide, but I don't think grunts have that much meat on them, so we're just gonna go and try to get as much off as possible. Do it the do it the right way, not the lazy way. Am I getting scales everywhere? No, that's what I was trying to find a video. I probably will be. I probably will eventually. I'm a, I am ai sling stuff. Wow, this meat looks awesome. I'll show you in a sec, but you just go down the backbone. After you get over the spine, just pop it all the way through. Go down. Man, I need to sharpen my knife. There we go. Watch your fingers. I filleted a couple fish before, dude. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have a party boat, so I filleted this one of That meat actually looks really good. Super, super white. Ooh. Surprising, man. Yum. All right, so we got there. Okay. Flip it over. Obviously do the same thing. Dude, I need to sharpen this thing badly. Just when you get over the spine, just push it all the way through. Kind of hold the meat up and you just slide it all the way down. Just like that, boom. They got some mean pin bones, man. Key restaurant, don't play. Mm. Yeah, that. All right, now we're just skinning it. Uh, because you roll the rib cage, you don't need to cut out. You just kind of trim it before and after. Got all the stuff right here, but just start at the end. It's just, it's kind of weird. I've never filleted a fish in the kitchen, actually. It feels really weird. It feels like I'm breaking the law. Yeah, I gotta use a dull knife. Oh, God, it's so dull. Okay, and you just trim this stuff off right here. The best part about rolling the rib cage is you get, you know, the most amount of meat. Instead of, you know, we would have cut this whole section out right here, but we still have it or a little bit of it because we rolled the ribcage. Cut the pin bones out so you don't have any uh, unpleasant trees while you're eating it. Okay. Oh, just like that. This side didn't come out as well. Meat's kind of falling apart. Whatever it's grunt. Mondo grunt. Pin bones again. Is that meat? I mean, it looks pretty good. I guess you really never can tell with a grunt because you're used to having them so small. But you know, it actually is good looking meat. I'm sure they taste good if you actually fillet them, but A, who wants to fillet a ton of teeny tiny grunts to get any kind of meal? Like, if this was a regular sized grunt, this one fillet, it maybe take you five grunts, maybe to get as much meat there is on this one. We fillet them all the time for people on the party boats, so I don't know. People eat them, but obviously it's a little difficult for small ones. All right, the way I'm gonna cook this is, is the way I cook most of my fish, which is in the oven with olive oil and blackening, and that's it. Really, really easy to do, and uh, doesn't take that much time. So in a minute, I'm gonna put this in a glass pan with olive oil and put some zatarain on top of it and just pop it in. The thing I'm actually most excited about is these tomato things, and the reason I'm making them is actually I wanted to cook some eggs. So as you'll see in a video 
But then the next few days, I went to my good friend Kenzie's farm, and these are all eggs from her farm, from her free range chickens. So look how cool they are, like different colors and speckled stuff. I'm really excited to try these eggs. I don't think I've ha ever had a, like a legitimate free range egg, so that's what I wanted to do. What we're gonna do, we're gonna cut a third of the top of the tomatoes off. Then we're gonna scoop out all like the seed and flesh of it. And we're gonna put some cheese in there, some cilantro, and some salt and pepper. And then we're gonna bake it in a cast iron skillet. We're gonna cut the tops of these deals off. And then we're gonna grab a spoon. And just try to, you know, you have to leave some of the wall, or you have to leave a good amount of the wall in there. But we're just gonna, you know, kind of scoop out all the seeds and flesh. It's a tomato, not an animal. I'm trying my best, okay? Mm -hmm. Get that flesh. Shut up. And I try to get the biggest tomatoes possible because this recipe actually calls for small eggs. And you can see why this isn't a very big cavity in there, but we're gonna make do. We might have a little bit of overflow, but oh well. That's why I actually got that heirloom tomato. Heirloom? Heirloom? Heirloom. Heirloom? heirloom. heirloom. Whatever. I got the big tomato right there because I know it could definitely fit a whole egg. I'm doing the best I can to keep the walls together, but I have enough cavity. Yeah, I can fit a whole egg in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. For sure, yeah. All right, cool. So let's do that a couple more times. So we got them all poured out. You can kind of see here that really you got plenty of space for eggs. Maybe this one is a little bit questionable, but kind of cool inside the heirloom tomato. It does look like pineapple. That does look like pineapple on top. But uh, we're gonna put some ingredients in these, salt, pepper, cheddar cheese, cilantro, yada yada. So let me get to that really quick. So we actually need to cook these first because these take like 45 minutes to bake. Um, so I'm gonna get these going on, then I'm gonna get the fish going. Grab some eggs. I had a really good time with Kenzie the other day. I'm actually excited to show you guys that video. It was really cool. I turned into a farmhand for a day. Okay, so we're first gonna put some salt in all these. And then you're supposed to, let's see, I think this is the smallest one, so we're gonna try to fit that one in here. We're gonna, I'm gonna do some cheese at the top and the bottom, because I love cheese. You can just do it at the top if you want. If you're not a cheese person, if you're weird. <laughs> So it says to crack it in a bowl first. Gotta keep the yolk together. Alrighty. Now you can really tell the color is a lot brighter. There's the orange stuff in there from the tomato, but the yolk is a lot brighter color from these chickens. That's really cool. All right, so let's try to get them poured in there. Oh yeah, perfect. Like a glove. How about that? And then we're gonna put a little oh pepper on top. Ooh, a lot of pepper on top. Sprinkle. A little bit more cheese. And then we're gonna cut some cilantro. All right, put a little bit of that on top for garnishings. Because we're fancy on the Jovi T fishing channel. All right. And we're gonna repeat the process for the other one. For the tomatoes, you need to preheat it with a cast iron skillet in the oven at 350. The starting temperature I do for the fish is 420, and then if it's bigger, thicker piece, I'll bring up the temperature. For 420, it's good for like flounder or sea bass or vermilion snapper, just kind of thin fillets or smaller snapper species. That's what I usually do, but I'm gonna get the oven preheated, finish these up, and uh, get the fish in a pan. Okay, the oven just got done preheating. For the fish, really, really easy. Very, very simple. What you're gonna do, just baste the glass with a little bit of olive oil. Kinda just swish this around a little bit, spread it out with the fish. Make sure there's no scales on it, like that piece had. Lay it in there, drizzle a little bit more on top. A lot. A lot more, it's coming out faster than I thought. And just sprinkle. Whatever blackening you like. Easy as it gets. And then pop it in the oven for like 20 minutes. What? Yeah, I know, very fast. <laughs> yeah, those are our summer shakers. We're gonna pop the uh, 
Tomatoes in the oven real quick. Uh, this one's ready to go. You gotta coat this, I forgot to mention, you have to coat the pan with olive oil before you put it in the oven. I'm gonna throw a little bit more in there. Just a touch more. Okay, that should be fine. And you just place these on here. Give a little bit of distance. Six feet apart. Yeah, socially distancing tomatoes. And I'm gonna put it back in the oven for 45 minutes, right in the center of the oven. Or you can just do it. You can keep on checking them. Uh, whenever the egg white gets solid, you can take them out as well. So I'm gonna say 45 minutes, but I'm gonna periodically check it. And because those tomatoes take twice as long as the fish, I'm gonna put this in the fridge really quick. We're gonna come back in 20 minutes and we're gonna check the eggs and we're gonna pop the fish in, so BRB. All right, it's been 20 minutes. We're gonna check on the eggs. Oh no! Oh no, the big one busted open. Damn it. That sucks. Oh well, they're getting cooked. I guess that'd be a good gauge. You can still see that the, you can still kind of see that the whites aren't completely done, but we are gonna put the fish in, so. Oh shit, I hope this is shatter. No, glass can be in the oven. I don't know, but it's cold. Um, no, you should be fine. It'll be good content if it shatters. We're gonna pop right here. I'm scared, it's gonna explode in my hand. Get your hand away. Please don't explode. Please don't explode. I think it's fine. It hasn't shattered yet. Yeah, it's heat up. It's heat up, right? We're gonna give it another 20. Alrighty, it is time. Put it in the oven for about 20, a little more than 20 minutes, the fish. And it's looking right. Looks pretty good to me. God, that stuff came out white. This grunt looks like legit snapper after you cook it. Look how white that is. That's pretty nuts right there. Heads up, do not touch this. I got my friends here helping me. Uh, <laughs> we got the girls hanging out by the pool, so I'm forcing them to be a part of my contact. And we got, oh God, these things are looking right. Except for obviously the one that exploded, but whatever. Damn, these things look really cool. Damn, that's bubbling. Oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on right here, but <laughs> this one looks the most. This one actually cracked open a little bit. So I can see what they're saying in the directions to keep it kind of thick on the outside. Obviously, we had a casualty right there, close casualty right here from the expansion of the uh, egg, because it really did puff up a lot. I can see what they mean by having to, uh, I can see what they mean by have, make sure you have small eggs for these because clearly they want to burst out. What are you doing? Look at the food in front of us. Obviously I'm drooling and salivating. All right. We got the filet right here, kind of. All right, you guys can try it out. Let me know how this, I want, I'm really curious about that. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> so we got. Okay, I'll try it well. Yeah, Bailey, you don't like fish, do you? Yeah, this is awkward. Enjoy us eating. <laughs> Me either, but I want to try them. Dude, good sh That's so good. good. No, yes. that tastes really good. That's so like, okay. That's mm -hmm. All right, Ugh. I'm gonna try it. I don't eat fish, but I'm it's gonna try it. It's a little hot. <coughs> no, the, okay, that is really good. It's really hot. It's really good. It's good. What did you, what is this? What's on it? Got blackened. That already ain't blackened. No, that's good guys. Can I get the picture of whatever you use She's trying it. She, hey, she doesn't like, like she doesn't eat fish, but she's trying it. Can I get a picture of what the seasoning is? That should go. Are you serious? That's actually really no, good. I don't believe you at all. Are you faking for the no, camera? No, that's just good. No, <laughs> no, it's just really good. No, that's just actually good. Like I would grow up out on that. Yeah, Let me know. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. good. And like, exactly. I, I'll, I'll I get freaked out on fish. But... <laughs> all right, we're gonna cut this open real quick. Okay. Bust it wide open. Mm. Let's see. Ooh, Ooh. Is that an egg? <laughs> it is an egg. It's one of I went and hung out with my friend Kenzie yesterday, who is lives on a farm, and I did a bunch of stuff with her. I'm gonna try this out. Mine are really good. Is that good? Mm-hmm. How do you like? That's you really good. That'd be really good. Mm. It's kind of spicy oh, though. <laughs> it's kind of spicy though. Is she not gonna like it? Oh, oh she, she likes it. it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we're gonna enjoy this meal. If you guys like this content, make sure to subscribe, drop a like, comment, give me cooking tips. Love you guys. See you next time.